An early review of Intel's upcoming flagship i9-13900K processor was posted online and some recent rumors suggest that Raptor Lake will be more expensive than the previous generation. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Just wanted to make this quick video discussing these early benchmarks that were posted by video cards who are sourcing a Chinese hardware site called Bilibili. I thought it was kind of funny that Intel hasn't even officially unveiled their 13th gen CPUs and we're already seeing some reviewers around the world posting reviews and benchmarks. The original review got taken down and there were some more benchmarks and tests posted there pertaining to things like intercore latency, but once it's been posted, people online will be quick to save it so it's never actually gone, even though it's deleted, right? The person who conducted this review ran the 13900K and 12900K through several common benchmarks like Cinebench, IDA64, 3 Mark. so we got to see a direct comparison between the upcoming flagship CPU versus the current gen. However, I believe that most of these benchmarks, if not all of them, were done using the CPU in unlimited power mode. We'll talk a bit more about that in just a moment, but taking a look at the wide variety of benchmarks here, and we can see some significant improvements across the board when compared to the 12900K. An average of 40%, which sounds impressive at face value. The drastic improvements in multi-threading comes from the fact that there are more e-cores with these 13 gen CPUs. This 13900K has 16 e-cores, they have slightly higher IPC, and they are higher clocked as well, so that's where a lot of these improvements are coming from. As for the performance cores, those remain unchanged in regards to the amount, so we're looking at 8 performance cores, there's no IPC uplift, but they are clocked higher as well. On the 12900K, the E cores boost to about 3.7 GHz, and on the 13900K, we're looking at 4.3 GHz, so there is a dramatic increase there. When it came to single core performance, we're looking at a 13% improvement, so not as drastic as what AMD showed when compared to Zen 4 versus Zen 3, but then again, Alder Lake was already about 10 to 15% faster than Zen 3. Therefore, when it comes to single core performance, I'm expecting Raptor Lake and Zen 4 to be trading blows with each other. In the review, they also included tests measuring intercore latency, and it seems to have improved in that area as well. Intel have apparently optimized the ring bus here, and that was definitely needed considering the improved core count. The amount of cache was also increased with Raptor Lake, and we can see cache performance increases as well, though latency does take a slight hit. The reviewer also included some gaming benchmarks such as CSGO, and we can see a 13% improvement when comparing the DDR5 results, which lines up with the other single core benchmark results, and that makes sense considering CSGO is basically a single threaded game. The catch here was that this review was done with the CPUs in unlimited power mode, where essentially the power limits have been removed. During IDA64's FPU stress test, the 13900K consumed 343 watts of power, whereas the 12900K consumed 236, which is still pretty high, don't get me wrong, but the 13900K is ridiculously power hungry when you basically take off the power restrictions. 45% more power consumption. With the power limits in place for both CPUs, the results will obviously defer, but I highly doubt most users are going to be using the 13900K in this manner, unless they don't care about electricity costs, maybe they live in an area where it's cheap. But 343 watts is basically RTX 3080 territory. I get that the number of cores in the CPU are higher, but that's still quite obscene if you were to ask me. Raptor Lake to me basically just looks like Alder Lake with steroids. They've upped the amount of e-cores, they clocked them higher, and they added more cache as well. Which results in tremendous performance improvements when it comes to multi-core workloads. But for gaming, the improvements will be underwhelming. Not saying it's going to be slow, but just compared to Alder Lake, it's not going to look all that impressive. I have a feeling once all these CPUs are out, we're going to be seeing Alder Lake, Zen 3D, Zen 4, Raptor Lake all perform within margin of each other. So then it just basically comes down to personal preferences, cost, and availability. We'll have more of a thorough discussion on this once all of these CPUs are out in store shelves. But speaking of cost, when it comes to pricing, Intel will indeed be raising prices. Intel has gone on the record stating that prices for chips of future generations will increase due to inflation, but they never specifically mentioned by how much. Now I've heard from a source that has close ties to distributors here in North America as to what these prices will be. I only have info on three SKUs, but they're the main SKUs that will be rolled out initially. The 3900K will launch with an MSRP of 759, 
followed by the 13700K at 499 and the 13600K will launch for 349 So compared to the previous generation, these are some significant increases. Though keep in mind, I am in Canada and we do generally deal with marked up prices, so they could be a bit higher than what Intel officially announces. Intel's main selling point over Alder Lake will be just faster clocks and more e-cores. And you'll have to decide whether or not the extra premium for those features is going to be worth it. Though one of the advantages that Intel has for Raptor Lake is value. You can use DDR4 with these CPUs, you can also look for some Z690 boards on clearance and find a deal on those as well, since they are compatible with Raptor Lake. And since so many motherboards these days have BIOS flashback buttons, where you can just flash a BIOS without the need for the supported CPU, that will help a lot of first time builders. The other thing is that compared to Zen 4, they do technically offer more cores. While an i5 now costs $350, which is now closer to the Ryzen 7 7700X, it will perform more closer to the Ryzen 7 rather than the Ryzen 5. When it comes to single core performance, the 7600X, 13600K, and 7700X will probably all end up within margin of each other, but the 13600K with its 14 cores and 20 threads will make it more comparable, if not better, than a 7700X in some scenarios. So even though the prices on the CPUs have gone up, Compared to AMD, they are offering better value when you look more deeper into it, rather than just compare MSRP versus MSRP. I plan to do more comparisons and discussions surrounding Zen 4 and Rapture Lake once they are out on store shelves and reviewers have tested them. For now, that will do it for this one. I want you guys to let me know if you, these benchmarks made you excited for Rapture Lake, or if they just made you decide to keep using what you're currently using now. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.